Hey everyone, I'm going to briefly show my face. I want to welcome all of you. My name is Francis Caballo. I am with social media just for writers.com. I'm so happy to have Amy Collins again today. Wow, she is such a skilled presenter and she is so knowledgeable. And she was with us six months ago. And because of all of you, I am bringing her back today. And we are, I am, I'm thrilled, I'm sure you're thrilled, but I'm even more thrilled to have her here today and honored to have her back. So, before I turn my face off, and it sounds kind of funny, turn my face off. Oh, do you, you want to say hi, Amy? I do. I'm going to turn my face on. Hold on one second. Okay. And uh, guys, it's wonderful to, uh, to see you all in, again and to meet you. Here I am sitting in my office. I hope you can see me okay. Now, if you need to picture me, you've got to know that I'm going to need my old lady glasses while I do this presentation. <laughs> I'm, I'm I, they sit on top of my head most of the day, but I'm going to be doing this for the next hour. But I'm really glad to be here. It's wonderful to see you all. That's great. So I'm going to read just just part of Amy's bio. It's it's quite in depth, and um, she is. If you're not impressed with her yet, you're going to be very impressed with her by the time I read this bio. So Amy Collins is the president of New Shells Books, one of the largest book sales and marketing content providers in the United States as a former book buyer for a chain of bookstores in New York and sales director for a large publishing company. She has spent her career working with Barnes and Noble, Target, Costco, Books a Million, Walmart, and is a trusted expert speaker and recommended sales consultant for some of the largest book and library retailers and wholesalers in the publishing industry. In the last 20 years, Amy and her team have sold more than 40 million books into the bookstore library and chain store market for small and mid-sized publishers. Oh my goodness gracious, if ever there was a talented, worthy person to interview my webinar, you are the person. Actually, I'm not going to interview Amy today. She has her own PowerPoint presentation and I can't wait to see it and learn from it. So. I think, Amy, this is going to be a, a full hour show, so let's just start with it. And please, if you have questions, attendees, if you have questions, please type them in the chat or question box. And I will be checking that throughout Amy's presentation. And we will nudge her once in a while with your questions. And at the end, I think she's going to allow a few minutes for some additional questions. So. Okay, I Amy. absolutely am. I won't go anywhere until I've answered everyone's oh, questions, I promise. All right. Well, guys, it was nice to see you, but now uh, Francis and I are going to turn our, our cams off, mainly because of, of bandwidth. We want you guys to be able to see these screens. I would love to just point out to you uh, that that my, my favorite subtitle about talking about Amazon, yes, it's hard, yes, it's possible, and yes, you can do it. Amazon is so confusing. Everything about Amazon changes so much. And we're going to cover today a number of items. Uh, we're going to cover whether or not your book page has everything it needs. We're going to discuss how to make your book easier to find and buy. We're going to go through step by step the current rules about Amazon book reviews. The rules that Amazon has laid out for reviews changes. It feels like every week, but at least every few months. And I have spent a lot of time in the last few weeks making sure that I have a very good idea as to what marketing programs are available at Amazon, what the, rule, the rules are for reviews, and what the ranking and searchability rules and logarithms are at Amazon. So that's what we're going to cover today. Before I proceed, I was hoping you guys would go to the question box. You can find it. It's right here. Now, I'm pointing at you like you can still see me, and you can't. It's kind of like when I use air quotes and the camera's not on. But if you would go to the question box, and would you be kind enough to let me know if you can hear me okay? Just, just throw in a yes or a no if I'm breaking up. But I'd love to hear. Oh, Wendy, thank you. And Brenda, it's nice to meet you. All right. So I'm going to move on, and, uh, and we're going to get started. And so the first thing I said that we would cover is to talk about your book page and make sure it has everything it needs. Here is an example of an Amazon.com book page. And one of the first things that people ask me when they put their book up on Amazon, oh, Tom, thank you. Nice to meet you. I appreciate it. 
one of the first things that are mentioned whenever someone puts a book up on Amazon is whether or not they've got the look inside feature. People want to know, can I choose what book, what pages, what book pages go up on look inside? Do I have to just take whatever I get? Or can I send Amazon just a few pages and have, and I choose? No, you can't. I'm afraid Amazon needs to see the entire book and their computer chooses for us. There's no human being flipping through your book or your PDF deciding which 11 pages will be the most appealing. It's a, it's a computer bot that makes that call. And you guys will notice they switch it up. Every couple of months, it's a different set of pages that will be showing inside. So the look inside feature is not something you can choose, but it's incredibly important. The reason why look inside is one of the most important features on the Amazon page is because people have truly learned, they've been trained to browse for books online. If you'd asked me 10 years ago if that was possible, I would have bet a large sum of money that there was no way that the, that the huge chunk of the American, and I'm mainly talking about the American population at this point, the English speaking population out there, there was no way they would, they would be trained to browse online for new books and for new authors. I would, I would insist that they needed to go to bookstores and they needed to go to libraries, but that's just not the case. So I'm hearing a bit of an echo. Let me just shift my, my audio, my apologies. So what is happening now with the look inside is that it is allowing all those millennials and all those people who are fine looking at books online, it gives them a chance to flip through and to see a couple of the, sorry guys, I am having some, some audio problems. One moment. Hopefully this will be a little better. Um, I apologize. Francis, can you guys hear me okay? I was having an issue. I can hear you, but it's kind of an echo. I'm going to assume that you guys can hear me okay. Too far away. Yeah. Uh, hold on one moment, guys. I am so sorry about this. I am back, and I apologize for that. If That's this better. is better, I... I will keep going and I will just ignore the echo. I can ignore an echo. I do it at home with all of my stepkids. It's awesome. All right. The next thing on Amazon that besides the look inside that I like to make sure every page has, but I, I have to explain to some of my students. You will see here, I've just circled it, that my book is available through Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime is a program that Amazon has spent a lot of time and energy making sure that everybody joins. This allows people who buy my book to get the book in two days for free, two days shipping for free, or if they want it in one day, if you want it tomorrow, it's only $3.99. Amazon Prime it has become the, a lot of people when they search for books will check the box on the left that says only show me books that are available through Amazon Prime. So your book needs the look inside feature. Your book probably in almost all cases, I can't think of any reason why not, should be available through Amazon Prime. And the last thing I wanted to show you on this page, do you see that my book is discounted? So the retail price of my book is $16, but that Amazon has discounted it to $12.49. Yes, apparently Tom is telling me there is now an echo. I, I am sorry, guys, I don't know um, how to fix this. Uh, one moment, please. Um, I don't hear an no echo. echo. Okay, good. Well, then I will continue. My apologies. All right, so let's, uh, we're going to ignore my sound issues and just focus on the $16 price of my book. When Amazon decides to discount a book, it's usually for the following reasons. Either the book is doing so well that they are trying to draw more sales to them. If, if the right way this particular week was doing very well and was selling a couple of copies an hour, Amazon would dramatically discount the book because they would want to encourage shoppers, encourage, encourage potential purchasers to buy from them. They don't want people buying my book from barnesandnoble.com or Barnes & Noble proper. They don't want people 
going to IndieBound or one of the other online sites. They want people to buy from them. So they will discount my book. This, again, is done by a computer bot. There's no human being sitting there with his finger on his cheek going, hmm, Amy's book is doing really well. Another reason that books sometimes will get discounted is if the topic is doing well. If there is suddenly a huge run, uh, let's say that, that Dateline NBC runs a story on, um, on Wikipedia and how Wikipedia is actually, I'm not going to make up a story because sure enough, it'll end up on Twitter later that Amy said that Wikipedia was evil. It's not. But if Dateline NBC was running a story on Wikipedia and suddenly there's a, a slew of books being purchased on Wikipedia and you've written a book about that topic, you will probably find that your book is being discounted. I want to assure you that that discount does not come from your cut. I get this question a lot. If you sell your book through Create Space, through Ingram Spark, or directly through an Advantage or a Seller Central program, the amount of money that Amazon has contracted to give you does not change, no matter how deep the discount is. What happens is they will take, you'll see that they discounted my book, $3.51. That $3.51, that comes from their cut. They've decided they're going to take that cut out. Uh, I still get paid the same amount of money. So I hope that that works out for you guys and that that makes sense. Having your page fully fleshed out with a good description and a good bio. And you may be asking, well, how can I best get the, the best bio and the best look? That brings me to my next suggestion for Amazon. Do all of you guys have an Author Central page? I hope the answer is yes. I hope you all have gone to authorcentral.amazon.com and claimed your page. I have. You will see, here's my picture. Here's my bio. And we're going to talk about how to use this bio in a moment because my bio is chock full of search engine terms and keywords that people might be looking for. Things like book expert, book sales, book marketing, all the things that if somebody was, was searching for Amazon, I want them to find me. So that's in my bio. You know what else is on my Author Central page? All of my books. Another thing that's on my Author Central page is a link to all of my blog posts. Whenever I have a new blog post, it shows up on my Author Central page. So uh, you will also see customers also bought by. There's a number of fantastic tools. So may I recommend that after you've taken a hard look at your Amazon book page, that you then go to your Author Central page and make sure that you have taken advantage of all of the different elements that they offer. Twitter feed, blog tweet feed, your biography, your bibliography, videos, all of it can be added. Does that make sense to you guys? Are there any questions yet that I can answer? All right. Francis, anything at all? Um, no, I don't see any questions. Okay, well then I will simply move on. All right. The next thing I promised to talk to you about is how to make your book easier to find. See, first you want to make sure, it's kind of like getting your house ready for a Christmas party. First you have to make sure your house is in good shape. You got to make sure everything's clean and put away and everything's set up. Now, once your page is set up perfectly the way you want it to be, then it's time to start reaching out and start driving more people to that page. And that happens by making your book easier to find. We're going to talk a lot about the different tips and tools on how to make this happen. But this all starts with a fact. And this, and the fact is this. Amazon.com is the second largest, second most powerful search engine in the world after Google. Google.com is the number one most powerful search engine in the world, but the second largest search engine in the world is Amazon.com. They, if you treat Amazon the same way that you treat Google when it comes to SEO and ranking and searchability, you will not be sorry. There will be a lot of benefits to that. So how does ranking work? Ranking works in a number of ways. Ranking starts by being a reflection on how your book is doing. A number of my clients and students have come to me and they've asked for tips and trick on, uh, tricks on how to improve their ranking. And I say to them, who cares? 
Who cares what your ranking is? Your ranking is not a tool. Ranking does not affect sales. Ranking is simply a reflection as to how the tools you're using to increase your sales is doing. Ranking improves when more people are looking at your book, more people are clicking on your book and putting it in their shopping cart, more people are buying your book, and more people, your ranking also goes up if more people mention your book, either in reviews or, or on Amazon discussion forums. There's a whole bunch of ways that your ranking might be affected. If you all of a sudden, let's say your mother, your sister, and your best friend, all with different last names. Here's the thing. My name, my name is Amy Collins. My mother's last name is Collins. My sister's last name is Collins. My sister-in-law, Collins. If the three of them write a review for me, Amazon's probably not going to pay much attention. But if I get three people with different last names who don't, who aren't obviously connected to me, and they all write a review of my book on a Tuesday, my ranking is going to go through the roof. And that doesn't even mean anyone bought the book that day. So don't get too tied into ranking. Ranking doesn't always mean that your sales are increasing. What a good ranking will do is help gauge how your marketing efforts on Amazon are going. So that's why ranking, in my opinion, is so important, but it's nothing you want to lean your shoulder against. The secret to better ranking and showing up at the top of the search engine, because again, Amazon's a powerful search engine tool. The secret to better ranking used to be a couple of years ago, heck, a, a year ago, people would, would want to get their pre-orders. They, a book would be coming out in March. Let's say Frances has a new book coming out in March. And by mid-January, she'd have her book up on Amazon, ebook and print book, and she'd be going for those pre-orders. Start loading up, front load those pre-orders like crazy. Get hundreds of people to pre-order the book so that on March 3rd, when the book goes live, bam, she shoots to the top. She's number one in her category. That was how it worked for quite a bit of time. Well, Amazon doesn't, they don't play so nice with that anymore. There are new, there are new logarithms, there are new rules in place, and I'm about to tell you exactly what they are. But now, if you want to be number one in your category, if you want to show up at the top of your search, at the, the search engine in the ranking for your category, you need to be a little more subtle. You need to have constant, consistent sales over 30 days. So when Frances's new book comes out in March, what I'm going to recommend to her is that from March 3rd to April 5th, she starts, you know, doing her promotion, start getting organic sales, get some of her, her students and her clients to buy the book. She can get her mother-in-law to buy the book, you know, you, but, but start for 30 days having consistent, constant sales over a 30-day period. If you need to orchestrate this by getting two of your best friends to order the book on Tuesday and one to order it on Wednesday and another two friends to order on Thursday, then do it. But 30 days of sales is the minimum, then followed by a strong surge. If Frances's book, if she, if she really wants to drive her ranking, then the, the easiest and best way to do it in the past was pre-order. But those days are over. Now what she needs to do is hold off and ask people to order her book on a particular day or 48-hour period a month or two later. The reason is Amazon.com, now when they factor ranking in, they will take all the sales over the last 30 days and spread it out. They will divide by 30. So if you had no sales for 29 days and then you sold 200 copies on the 30th day, you will only get the ranking. You will get the same ranking as someone who sold their book, who sold, you know, what, is, what would that be? Seven, seven books a day over the last 30 days. So that's how that would work. So I need you guys to, to know that the pre-order days, if what you're looking for is pre-orders just so you can build excitement, that's great. But if you're actually using it to try and grow your ranking or, or even get to be a, a top bestseller on Amazon, be aware that their new logarithms will thwart you unless you understand how to play. And Amy, the last some, thing. Oh. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We have some questions. I'm sorry. I interrupted you. No, that's what I wanted you to do. Okay. Okay. I was, I was waiting for you to take a breath. 
Oh, God, that will never happen. Are you kidding me? I'm Irish. That will never okay. happen. Uh, one question was, if you can go over your author bio and the SEO phrases you've included. I will. I'm actually, in about four slides, going to give you a tutorial on how to use keywords in your author bio. So would it be okay with you if I did that in just a few slides? Sure. And we have three more questions. I'm ready. Okay. Um, my books, POD in CreateSpace, used to be shown as available on Prime, and now it's and now it still is, but mentions extra processing time. Is this now standard? Brenda, I would guess that this extra processing time just kicked in in the last week or two. And feel free to answer. I'm I'm gonna I'm here on the question. I'm looking at the question box now. Okay. Uh, but Brenda, I would I would guess that it was relatively recent. Is that true? The reason is create space every holiday season in November and they see a huge surge in print on demand sales in November and December and their printing presses can't always keep up the way they can in the middle of June. So but I wouldn't worry Brenda that there's something wrong with your book. A lot of the print-on-demand books through CreateSpace and Ingram Spark are now starting to say may need one or two extra days. In many cases, they actually still ship, but Amazon's covering their, their hiney right now. It happens every year from about the 5th of November till the Feast of the Epiphany. So, uh, but don't worry about it. it it's, it's in everyone's print-on-demand world. Okay, another question is from Rosemary. I heard if you connect your Facebook page to Amazon, Twitter, etc., Amazon can then track your activity, especially any activity regarding reviews. I've been told repeatedly don't link so don't link social accounts to Amazon. What are your thoughts on this? Well, Rosemary, um, I don't know if this is going to upset you, but I actually feel the opposite. I think you should link all of your social media accounts that you can to Amazon. And I think that you shouldn't do anything on social media that will piss Amazon off. So you will please forgive me for being so blunt. But where people get in trouble is when they go on to Facebook or Twitter and they put a call out and say, hey, are there any authors who want to trade reviews? I'll review your book. You review mine. Amazon frowns on that. Or now I'm not saying you do that. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying the reason why you've heard this advice is because there are people out there, and it's true, Amazon has looked on Facebook and Twitter and seen that people were trying to orchestrate either a review swap or they were pulling some shenanigans to try and get more sales on a particular day and to spike their, their ranking. So I agree with the advice that you were given. I, I agree that, that I, I, don't, I shouldn't say I agree. I, I'm, I say yes. The advice that you were given is solid. That is exactly what might happen. But if you don't do anything against Amazon's community rules, there's no reason to be nervous about linking. And there's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of benefits to being able to link the, uh, the Amazon buy buttons and all that right to your social media and to have, the, especially on YouTube, to have the Google YouTube connection. That way you've got two search engines cross-promoting with each other beautifully. I do link my social media, especially YouTube and Google+, Plus, because when people are on Google typing in book expert, I want my Amazon page to be on the front page, and that's why I do it. Okay, ready for another question? Kat, I will, but I need to tell you, Kat, I am going to answer about reviews and why yours were taken off in a few slides. Okay, that's it then. Okay. Oh, no, Darlene, Darlene. I agree with you. Oh, Darlene. No, Amazon, Amazon will frown upon your reviews if the only people who have reviewed your book are people that are connected to you. Now, that doesn't mean, again, that there's a human being who's holding up, you know, an abacus and, and, and your Facebook page and, and doing the math. But Amazon's computer bots are so clever. They're so powerful now, and they're getting more powerful that it does make a great deal of sense to try and get as many organic reviews as possible before you start reaching out to your friends. 
I, I don't even ask my friends to review my books, mainly because my friends are horribly mean people and God knows what they'd say about me, but also <laughs> because they will get yanked. And we're going to talk at length about reviews in just a moment. All right. The last thing I'd like to mention to you guys about ranking is that the growing number of reviews building month on month will do more to increase and keep your ranking bumped up than anything else. Amazon cares about organic, honest reviews. And if you are at 16,000 for your category, and that's a good number, guys. I don't care what category you're in. If you're at 16,000 for your category and you don't get any new reviews for two months, your ranking will sink, no matter how many you know, tricks you pull. But if you can get a constant inflow, even one or two a week, of reviews, if you don't let too much time pass between review, new reviews being posted, your ranking will continue to improve week on week. So I hope those three tips help because we're already at almost 5.30 and I haven't even gotten to keywords yet. Somebody was asking how to use keywords in an author biography. I'm going to share, now I, I can't give you a whole tutorial on keywords, but I am going to tell you about my three favorite websites that I use to get the keywords and to, to judge them. See, I may think that Book Expert is the best keyword out there, but the truth is is that when I went to Kindlepreneur.com and when I went to Yazif.com and when I use Google AdWords tools, Kindlepreneur.com, Yazif.com, and Google AdWords tools, when I use and all three of these, all three of these are very, very they're very powerful. And, and, but they all gave me keywords that I thought were crazy. Bird by bird by Anne Lamott. Are you kidding? What? Books about books? I'm not going to type in books about books in my keywords. Well, guess what the number two and number one most purchased keyword on for me? I mean, because I can do a report and, and see that the number one way that people find my book is when they type in books on books. And the number two is when they type in bird on bird. I never would have chosen those. So may I recommend that you go to kindlepreneur.com, yazif.com, and use Google AdWords tools. All three of these are very, very powerful tools. And they are going to give you a very long list of authors, titles, and phrases that you can use as, as, as in your keyword work. And then you take the top ones, which they'll, they'll show you how to rank them. I'm sorry, I can't do a tutorial on that today. I, I will do my best to, I'll come back if Frances lets me, and I'll show you all about that. And I know she knows tons about it as well. But once you've found your best keywords, get them into your bio. Get them into your book description. You will see here that my book description, have you written a book? Are you thinking about writing a book? Have you heard it's easy to self-publish? Do you think those questions were just generated out of my nose? No. Those were generated because I used these three websites I'm talking about. Self-published, writing a book. Um, so that is how you use the keywords. Get them into your description. Get them into your bio. And then I'll also give you one final uh, trick because there's other places that you can put keywords besides just in your author and your bio. Your book description, yes, in your author bio but you also can see them in your author central page. And one of the ways I do it is let's say that one of the, the big suggested keywords for me is book sales funnel or book expert. Well, guess what my next blog is going to be called? It's going to be called book sales funnel because that blog name is going to show up on my author central page. And if I use these keyword generators, and I find out that my biggest competitors and comp title authors are Joel Friedlander and Jane Friedman and Francis Caballo. I mean, let's say it's these guys. I, you can bet your sweet biffy that I'm going to put those books and those authors in a wish list so that my book and their book are intimately linked in Amazon's logarithm. And the last thing I'm going to recommend is that if you have – friends, loved ones, cohorts who are going to write a book review for you anyway. And I will discuss this in a few slides, but you can actually feed reviewers and reviews with certain keywords. If you would like somebody who is, if one of your students decides that they're going to write a review of your book, 
ask them to mention in the review that you're a book expert. Ask them to use the phrase, if they feel comfortable that you are a, a, a book sales, I don't know, maven, genius, whatever keywords come up. So those are all a, a, a great many lists of where you can put keywords. I'm going to quickly, okay, now those of you who are asking me to spell some of these websites, I will go back very quickly. They're right there. I've, I've, I've got them on the page. There's kindlepreneur.com, yazif.com, and Google AdWords. I, I don't have the Google AdWords uh, website, it's, um, but it's very easy to Google. All right. So We have some more questions. questions. All right, let me look. So Lee asks, I have a popular speaking platform. I sell my books afterwards. I understand they want to control reviews from sales. I don't know these people and they buy from me and then they write reviews but they are not their verified purchaser. They don't usually accept those from non-purchases. You know, that's not that is, necessarily true. That's, no, that's not been my experience at all. Yeah. It is true that Amazon will will um, put the reviews in certain order of power. You know, the reviews that got the most helpful in, and we're going to talk a little bit about thumbs up and thumbs down for the reviews, which ones are helpful and which ones aren't. The ones that are considered the most helpful go on top. The most recent go on top. And the verified reviews and Vine reviewers, they go. But if even if your book is not a verified purchase by Amazon, my experience is they go up easily and smoothly without any problem. Right, and so, and, and what I tend to do is I if if I if I write a review for a book that I haven't purchased on Amazon, I will say that I you know I, I got this book from the library or I got, I got this book directly from the author, and I put that right in my review. I guess I don't have to, but that's what that's how I handle that. I think it's a great idea. I'll, I'll tell yeah. you guys a brief story. You're not here for story time. And Lee, by the way, good to see you. Uh, thank you. Um, okay, either that or the readers are not following instructions for now that I believe. Let me tell you a, a very brief story. Um, and and this could have happened to and it could have happened to a dozen different people this week. But I I'm Irish um, and I'm verbose and I tend to exaggerate for effect. I mean I, I tend to if something costs twenty dollars, I'll say it costs thirty. I mean that's just part of my charm. That's part of me. But I'm telling you guys the honest to God truth. When I tell you that I have had hundreds, I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of students come to me with the same story. They asked their friends to write a review on Amazon. Their reviews ran into them at the, their friends ran into them at the supermarket or at church or at the movie theater. And they say, oh, we loved your book. We, lo we bought it from Amazon or we bought it from the bookstore or I even took the free copy you gave me. And of course, we wrote a review. We loved it. I know very little for a fact, but I can promise you this. Your friends did not buy your book for the most part. The vast majority of them didn't. They, they mean to. They're going to. They've, they've run into you at church, and they're embarrassed, and they, you asked them to buy the book two weeks ago, and, and they were going to, but they forgot. Um, and, and when they go home this afternoon, they're going to buy your book, and they're going to write a review. And then what happens is the bills start to lose, and they forget. Depending on your friends or, or strangers to write a review can be so disheartening because even if they're your clients or they've heard you um, give a speech and they're so enthused, by the time they get home, they've run out of steam or attention or they don't know how to write a review and, and they're, they're awkward and they sit there with that blank page in front of them and they don't know how to handle it. So I would just suggest that um, a large number of people who say they wrote a review may not have. I, I, Francis, I don't know if you agree or disagree with that, but that's just been my experience with my students. Yes, I, I absolutely agree with you. I, mm -hmm. I, I was just, I was just reading what Lee St. John had written that people who had read his book, that that, that Amazon doesn't accept reviews from people when they're from the, this. He says the same U, URL. That's true. If people I are from have mean, the same ISP, you know, internet service yeah. provider. They won't accept different re reviews. Well, and you know that that is probably true. And and Rebecca's right. You do need to actually be a verified Amazon customer 
to leave an Amazon review, which I think is perfectly fair. Um, there are hundreds of millions of people who have read, who could be reading your book, focusing on, and, and, and Amazon is responsible, according to the Codex Foundation, which did a study with Amazon. Use, I mean, they were partnered with Amazon. Amazon is responsible for 41% of the print book sales, new print book sales in the world right now. 41% of print book sales go through Amazon.com, and 67% of eBooks go through Amazon. You can find people who are Amazon customers to write reviews for you. You can find people with different ISP addresses. Don't worry about the negative. Focus on all of the opportunities out there. I'm really sorry. Judith Bryles wrote a review of my book, and two months later, I wrote a review of hers, and it was organic. Amazon took one look at the two of us and, and removed both of our reviews from the other person's book. They figured we'd trade it. I didn't even know she'd reviewed my book. I hadn't paid attention. It happened. So may I recommend that you focus on what, on, you know, control the controllable. Just focus on what, what will work. All right, so can you guys all see a screen right now that talks about verified reviews and Vine reviews? Because we've been talking a lot about this for the last few minutes. And verified reviews are reviews that are written by people who actually purchased the book from Amazon. Vine reviews are reviews that are left by a group of reviewers who have written so many reviews and have gotten so many helpful thumbs up by other shoppers that Amazon has approached them and asked them if they'd like to be part of this Vine review program. And these reviewers, these Vine reviewers, sign a code of conduct. They agree that they will not receive any financial compensation for their reviews. And they also agree, now pay attention to this, guys, because this is they will not get any free product in exchange for writing a review. Because it used to be up until about a year and a half ago that Vine reviewers were getting iPads and electronics and diapers and, and dog food, all so that they could write reviews. And, and Amazon said, no more. You are not allowed to write a review if you receive the product free or dramatically discounted. With one exception, books are the exception. Amazon, if you look at their, at their community guidelines, Amazon puts it in writing. They understand that there is a long-standing tradition of exchanging review copies of books for reviews, and they're not going to thwart that. They're not going to get in the way. You are still allowed to offer free copies of your books for reviews. You are not allowed to buy the book for people on Amazon so that it's a verified review. That's a no-no. If they catch you bulk purchasing Amazon gift certificates and lowering your ebook to 99 cents so that you drive up your sales, they're going to start removing your reviews. I guess what I'm getting at, guys, is there's, there's so many great ways to improve your sales. Let's not game the system. Let's not do something that, that doesn't just allow for success organically. All right, so do you see this review right here? This is a review of a wonderful book called Man Called Ove. Absolutely love this book. But one of the things I wanted to show you about this review is right here. I just circled in in red where the reviewer says, this kind of transformation reminds me of another book I really enjoy, Practical Enlightenment by Ariel and Shia Kane. Well, don't you think that Ariel and Shia Kane, that their sales did not go up? Don't you think they didn't? Oh, my God, they did. Their sales went through the roof when this reviewer linked a New York Times best-selling book of a man called O to a new book that almost no one had heard of. This is a way to link best-selling books to your book. You have to be careful. I do not want to hear that any of you guys did this, you know, on purpose. But you can, if someone's going to write a review of your book, and if you know, let's say you were talking to somebody and you found out that they're a huge fan of, oh, I don't, Lee Child, and you've written a political thriller. Well, we're going to talk about Lee Child in a second, but why wouldn't you have them review Lee Child's book and mention yours? The other thing I wanted to point out, and it's right here in red, but do you see right here this, did you find this review helpful? Make sure that you, your cohorts, and all of your supporters and, and the readers of your book, if they found a five- or a four-star review helpful, make sure that they give it a thumbs up. For those of you who are tearing your hair out right now and, and sighing into the wind and, and, and absolutely beside yourself because of a one-star review, 
have a legion of people go out and call the review not helpful. You know, you can click on a no as well as your mother and someone else, and everyone who clicks no, no that review suddenly gets buried. What to do with a one or two star review? Ignore it. You can you can say it's not helpful, and then you can go get as many five and four star reviews as you. Because there's tons of people out there who are going to dig your book, guys. If there's one or two people who don't, just let it go. It's not a big deal. All right, let me quickly look because what we're going to do next is we're going to dig in and take a few minutes and talk about marketing opportunities that Amazon now allows people. We're now finally allowed to play on the same level playing field as some of the big publishers. We can actually buy some ads. We have a question. All right. From okay. Rosemary. Oh, I was just reading it. Yes. Go ahead. So if the author gifts their ebooks because the readers won them in author takeover contests and they write a review, you're saying Amazon will not allow them to review your book? I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's a really good chance that Amazon will probably pull the review after a few weeks or months. I'm saying that you're taking a chance that those reviews will not have a lifetime of health on Amazon.com. That is that's just the way it is. Those contests those things that are orchestrated in the past to drive a lot of reviews, Amazon frowns on them. They will not, they will not block the reviews, but they may not allow them to stay on very long. Okay. And, and Prissy, and Prissy asks, yes, yes, authors can go in to four and five. I, I give my four and five star reviews a thumbs up, and then I call my mom and I ask her to do the same thing. You know, my boyfriend, he has to give him a thumbs up. I mean, every, it's all hands on deck, guys. Yeah. Do you guys see, I, I hope I'm being clear enough about the, the differences, because they're not subtle, between gaming and the system and managing the system. I don't want any of you guys to manipulate. There's a difference between manipulating reviews and managing them. And I hope I'm being clear here, because Amazon is, I, I agree with most of their community guidelines. They are trying to create an atmosphere where reviews can be trusted as organic, naturally occurring things. Uh, Tom is saying ARCs are not in violation. Not at all. Tom, advanced reader copies are not only not in violation, they're highly recommended. Sending a review to a reviewer is a time-honored tradition. Running a contest and, and giving away ebooks, um, depending on who's run the contest, if they're known for being gamers, then that's going to be problematic. If you run the contest yourself on your social media, it'll probably get pulled. But something organic through an email system or requesting that Vine reviewers or top reviewers review your book, completely legit. And it's what I do. I do it for my students all the time. Wendy, I absolutely, if you want to email me at amy at newshelf.com, I will absolutely answer your question, but I need more information and I can't get into it here. Pricing first-time novels, that's, you know, how to price a book. It's, it's a bit more complicated than I can get into, but I'd be very happy to help. Just email me at amy at newshelves.com so I can ask you a few more questions, get to know your book a little bit. I'd be very happy to help you come up with a price. Shall we get back to marketing opportunities through AMS? Francis, do you see any other questions I may have missed? I don't see any other questions, Amy. All right. Woohoo! <laughs> Amazon Marketing Services, AMS, now offers three different ways that you can advertise your book. You can advertise your book right here. And the first option is through sponsored products. And don't worry, guys, I'm going to show you examples of these. Headline search ads are another option and product display ads. So let's talk about what sponsored products headline search ads, and product display ads look like. I have three examples here. The first example right here is a sponsored product. Now, I was mentioning Lee Child a minute ago. When I go into Amazon and I decide that I want to buy the next Jack Reacher book, by the way, I, I don't. I've, I've never read a Jack Reacher book in my life. But for the sake of argument, let's say I want to buy the next Jack Reacher book, perhaps for my Uncle John. Do you guys see here the list of Lee Child's books? Gone Tomorrow, Tripwire, 61 Hours, Persuader. These are all the books. But 
Do you see the last one, number five on the list? No exit. That's not a Jack Reacher novel. That's not a Lee Childs novel. This author or this publisher, perhaps it was Taylor Adams, it may have been his publisher, somebody decided to put a bid in. And they said, every time someone types in the word Jack Reacher or the words Lee Childs, I want my books to show up on the front page of the search engine. And I, I want to do this, and, and, and I want to pay a certain amount of money. I'm, I'm going to set a budget of $5 a day or $10 a day. And when we top out, let's say it's $10 a day, and when the $10 is spent, you need to stop because I don't want to spend more than $10 a day. And this is what happens when Taylor decides to, to do that. So do you guys, that is a sponsored product ad. The next ad, which is called a headline ad, do you see this here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that pop up again. When you're on Amazon and you type in Jack Reacher, but let's say that somebody buys a headline ad. Now, this author's name is Diane Caffrey. Diane Caffrey wrote a series of books, the Jack and Joe series. Don't know Jack, Jack and Joe, we're all about Jack. So she's got Jack the Reaper, and she would like to advertise this series. So she purchased the headline. When, whenever someone types in Jack Reacher or Lee Child, her book series shows up on the top of the page, right at eye level. And the third advertisement that you can buy are the promoted product advertisement. It's right here. Again, I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that pop up again. You see this little box down here to the bottom left. It's called an innocent client. Scott Pratt decided to buy these ads. And they show up right underneath the buy now buttons and the give a gift and the wish list. I'm not crazy about these. i got to be honest with you. I don't think that most people look at them. I think that most of them are a waste of money. That's my experience based on the ads that I have run. And we have a few minutes left. And we only have about four or five minutes left. But I would like to show you what setting these ads up look like and and. Francis, I, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm just gonna, I know we have some questions, but guys, I'm just going to run through this, and then I, I promise I'm not going anywhere. I will answer your questions. But, uh, Francis, I'm just going to ask you, are these three ads, are these clear? Do you now see the three different ways that, that we can advertise on Amazon if we're uh, small presses or independent authors? Yes, I do. Okay, good, good. Well, let's take a look then. And this is directly from my page. I just set up an ad, and I've got a client who's written a political thriller. That's why Lee Child is all over this presentation. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but right here, you're going to see that you can enter keywords. I went to Yazip.com and Kindlepreneur and Google AdWords, all those places I told you about, and I pulled up. All right, don't get upset. Brace yourself. I pulled up 2,000 keywords. 2,000 author names, competitive title names, and phrases that people might type in if they wanted to look for a book that was a little like Lee Childs and other political thrillers and Jack Reacher novels, because my client's book was very much like that. I found 2,000 keywords that would work, and I put 1,000 of them. I just cut and paste. Don't worry. It's not, you don't have to type them. I put 1,000 of them into this big orange box that you see here. You can see some of them, Betrayal and Blood, A Brief History of Seven Kings. Now, this is eight or nine pages long. This is just the top sheet I can show you now. And I did 50 cents per click. Well, I'm here to tell you that as a sponsored product, my client's book, he's a, a fabulous writer, but his book was getting no attention on Amazon. It wasn't showing up in the search engines at all. Political thriller, legal thriller, leech, nothing. The minute I started running this campaign, all of a sudden he was on the front page. of He had over 33,000 impressions. And impressions for these AMS ads means that somebody actually scrolled past and saw his book in the search engine. 33,000 impressions in the first 24 hours. And he started selling books. My experience is, is about for fiction, you're going to get about a one to five ratio if you do it right. Now, I can't do an entire class in the next four minutes on how to run an Amazon review campaign. That's, I'd be happy to, but I, I just can't. But today's an overview about, about the different tricks. But may I strongly recommend, if you have $5 a day and five days to kill, 
do the math, guys. That's 25 bucks. Hey, go wild. Bump it up to 35 or 40. May I recommend that you try and you play around with some of these AMS, Amazon Marketing Services, options because you will find that at a time when your book is being artificially smushed down, Amazon has gotten a lot of press lately because they are keeping certain authors and certain small presses down in the search engines. They're not rising to the top. They are, and it's their privilege. I don't have an opinion about this. I'm not going to get into an argument about whether it's right or wrong. But they are giving the people who actually pay to have their books float up to the top of these search engines far more power than the people who don't. May I suggest that you play around with this if it's in your budget and see what it does for your book sale. All right. Now, Kat has a question here. Vionary fiction is a rather small section. Should I put my book in a different section? By the way, Amy, oh, oh well, thank you, Kat. That's lovely. Vionary fiction. I, wow. I'm hoping visionary fiction maybe. Maybe it's binary. And it's, that's a category I'm unaware of. I would say that if you're thinking of moving your book to another category, ah, there we go. Hi, Kat. You type just like I do. Way to go. I would suggest that just like gaming in any other part of the industry, only put your books in the categories where it makes the most sense. Yes, you can put your books in second, third, even, even fourth degree categories. Go to authorcentral.amazon.com. This is another great, great use for authorcentral.com. Click on the Contact Me button. They'll call you. If you have an Author Central account, which is free to get and easy, you can actually talk to a human being at Amazon, and you can tell them that visionary fiction is a small subset, and you'd also like your book to be listed under women's fiction or general fiction, but you're not sure how, and they'll do it for you. Author Central reps are amazing, and they will do things for you. If you find out that you've got uh, a, a, a double dip in your, in your description and you can't figure out, Author Central reps will do so much to help you out. All you need to do is call them. So that's what I would suggest, Kat, that you do. All right. Uh, Francis, do you have any questions for me? I mean, I know you know all this, but, I mean, is there anything that I can do to – Besides, uh, tell you guys how much fun I have with Francis's group, and you guys have got some really savvy questions here. I'm very impressed. Um, I think you were wonderful, Amy. Oh, you are thanks. just, you are so full of information and such an asset, and I'm so glad that the indie book publishing field has you and that we had you for an hour today. Oh, I'm very grateful. You know I'm a huge fan, and I have learned so much from you um, including a lot of the stuff that I, I taught today. 